Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar. We're going to be starting here in a second. Welcome to this. This is on Outlook for Legal Professionals. This is a Florida Bar approved webinar. And we're going to try and make Outlook as much fun as humanly possible today on this webinar. So the more um, that you interact with me and the more questions you ask me, the more fun we can make this. Okay, great. Um, let's get started. Uh, so this is me. Ooh, it should say using uh, Outlook since the 90s. Um, we did a series on Excel and Microsoft, and I used this slide. I was like, oh, that's a picture of me. That's my bio. I'll just use this. But so I'm the CEO and a co-founder of Rocket Matter. So I wrote the first version of the program. In fact, I'll be introducing my um, you know, guest star, Chad Thomas, in a second here. He is, we're both product people. You know, I, I, um, I'm the CEO of the company, but at, at, at core, I love product. I like building product, making product, technology, design, all that kind of stuff. Over the years, since like 2007, you know, since then, I've worked with thousands and thousands of law firms. Um, I've gotten to see how they operate, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and, you know, I approach things from a software engineering perspective. So I have kind of like a different take on things than most lawyers do when it comes to business. Uh, you can always reach out to me, larry.port at rockandmatter.com. Um, and on LinkedIn, always happy to, to, to have more contacts. Um, because of all this work I've done with uh, law firms, you know, uh, with Rocket Matter, which is a practice management software and time and billing software, uh, we do a ton of information because since I come from the software industry, we have all sorts of ways to make things more efficient. And the lean stuff that we use, the agile stuff, I like to talk a lot about um, different things that we do to make work more efficient in our industry that lawyers can use as well. So check out the Lean Law Firm book, the podcast, the audio book, whatever. Uh, go to the Rocket Matter website. We have some awesome infographics and things for people. So go take a look whenever you can. Um, <clears throat> by the way, somebody's saying that they can't see a mute button on their side and you don't want to interrupt the webinar. Don't worry about a thing. You already uh, are muted. So, so that's good. Okay. We have a guest star, just like on Love Boat, right, today. And his name is Chad Thomas, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, he is the head of product for Imagine Time. And uh, since we're talking about Outlook, I wanted him on this program because they have this like uh, a tool for Outlook that I think lawyers need to embrace and love. It's, it's incredible. So we'll be taking a look at a live demonstration of that in a little bit. We're going to be seeing Outlook in a variety of contexts. Um, so admittedly 50 minutes for a CLE is a long time to talk about an email program or a calendaring program. So what are we going to be doing for an hour here? So um, we're going to talk a lot about email itself and how to be more efficient and how to move around more quickly with keyboard shortcuts. We're going to talk about really helpful plugins uh, like Imagine Share, the one that Chad is going to show us. Um, another one called Find Time to find schedules for people. And uh, then, you know, we're going to be answering any questions that you have. And also, I want to talk about something that's really been beneficial for me and I've been using for over 10 years called Zero Inbox, which is not a tool. It's a method of managing your email. So um, one thing, though, before I, I, I get into any of this, um, I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about um, your needs. So I have a little poll um, that I'm going to launch here. And... And somebody asked if you're going to have copies of the slides for future reference. Yes, and they'll be valuable. So we're going to be passing out the slides and some cheat sheets and some recordings within a day or so after this webinar. Um, but right now, if you don't mind, if you can turn your attention back to the screen, um, what would help me is if you tell me a little bit about like where you're coming from. Like, why did you sign up for this webinar today? Is it just to get, it may, maybe it's just to get the CLE. That's fine. Uh, that's cool. Um, but, you know, if you're here and you want to learn about webinar and, or you want to learn about Outlook, I'm sorry, and you have a, you know, a software person on the phone um, or on the webinar guiding this, like, what is it that you'd like to find out about? So if, if the answer is not there, then just like use the chat widget and uh, that would be there. So ooh, somebody's saying managing and tracking tasks. Okay. Um, there's, that's some, somebody put that in the chat widget. That's outside of it. Yeah, another person said like task management. Um, I'll leave this up for a little bit because um, I want to try and get as many participants as possible answering these questions. The first question is, what's your biggest pain point? 
answers are kind of coming in. Um, <clears throat> Then, and then uh, a number of people said uh, something else, but then I got two answers in chat. So if you, if you, if you are using something uh, that, you know, keep doing all this, uh, people are saying, yeah, the size of the mailbox is huge and so on and so forth. Contacts, Excel, this is not the webinar for Excel. This is the webinar for Outlook. Uh, so we did a webinar on Excel previously. And so if you're interested, you can always email me larry.port at rocketmatter.time and I can send that to you. Okay, so, all right. Somebody's saying that they wanna move to Outlook or they need to get their firm on Outlook. So there's things like that. Um, <clears throat> okay, people are talking about how do you get your documents in and out of emails? All right, so a lot of good question here. Search functionality in Office 365 was a big uh, step backwards. Sending V cards. Oh, okay, so there's all sorts of like um, little uh, kind of tidbits and we'll try and hit as many as we can. And if we can't do them in this webinar, then I'll email you afterwards. So <clears throat> then someone else said tech tools that are critical are Word printing out. All right, gotcha. PDF tools, Excel, gotcha. All right, let's see what everybody said. Okay, so the mode here is um, for answer number one, meaning statistically the most common answer is no real pain points, just want to be more efficient. A lot of people are overwhelmed by email. Uh, for question number two, what technology tools are critical parts of your office aside from Outlook, e-signature? Uh, a, a surprisingly small percentage are using e-sig or at least uh, admitted to using e-sig. Because uh, that's a huge tool for people. Legal practice management software, forty-one percent. That's the mode, and it's still in the minority. It's not. It didn't exceed fifty percent. So uh, this is um, there. You go. Um, that's the answer. So let's take a look. First of all, the the one thing that you should probably um, realize first is what I have here on my screen is that these days when you buy micro when you buy something like Outlook, you buy something called a Microsoft 365 subscription. And there's different um, there's different levels of it. Oh, and somebody's saying how to billing all the emails, too many emails per day, too much time to bill them all each day. Okay, we can talk a little bit about that and I can show you a workflow. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll hop back in and I'll take, the, I'll take a look at the questions in a little bit here. So there's really four levels of Microsoft Office or 365 plans. And these are subscriptions. Back in the day, you used to have to spend like a couple of hundred bucks, 300 bucks or so, or whatever it was to buy a copy of Outlook and you'd get Word and Excel as well. The one that I think that people should be using is, is really uh, the $12.50 a month plan. If, if you're if you're penny wise and pound foolish and go for the $5 per user per month, you really limit yourself on what you can get. It's uh, pretty much all, um, you know, web and mobile versions only. It's really nice with these kind of applications to have the desktop version, especially for Word and Excel. But, you know, for, for Outlook, I like the web version personally, but uh, the desktop version is, is nice to have as well. Um, and then if you, the, the larger plans are not that important. Like the premium stuff for small offices, you don't need all those fancy things down at the bottom of the screen. So you don't need to be paying all that. But the $12.50 plan is a very reasonable one. Um, with Microsoft 365, you, have, you get all sorts of tools. You don't just get the big tools. You don't just get like Outlook, Excel, Word, and PowerPoint, things like that. You get um, something called Planner and Project, uh, things that are I don't know if Microsoft just acquired these tools or what. Uh, they have um, Yammer, which is some sort of like chatting tool. There's all sorts of crazy things in here. There's OneNote, you know, uh, SharePoint and To-Do, which you'll see um, the way that uh, Outlook is now set up when you, To-Do is now really kind of a part of Outlook or Outlook kind of links to To-Do. You'll see how that works. Okay. So the first thing to know about Outlook is that uh, it's available pretty much on every platform. Uh, and that's great. Uh, it's on your mobile device. It's on the web. It's There's dedicated native applications for um, Mac, for PC. So, you know, you can use it pretty much anywhere. And this is a view of the same inbox. You can kind of tell both from the micro, both from the Mac platform and my mobile device. I'm going to be demonstrating Outlook from a Mac today. Um, I don't use a PC. I haven't used a PC in probably 12 or 15 years. Um, but when I demonstrate it in the, in, in the web-based application, 
it's going to be uh, the same as you would see on a PC in the web-based application. Um, obviously, it's a little tricky to show a mobile version of it, but the mobile version is quite powerful. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the an overview of the feature. So, so clearly, like the the big shining stars of Outlook are email contacts and calendar, right? So here is my email from Wayfair. They're trying to get me to buy thrill pillows. So, and then there's the calendar view. That's the Mac-based calendar view of, of Outlook. There's other functionality as well. There's notes and to do. So like, um, I'll kind of just hop right in and, and show you some of the things that um, Outlook does. And for some people, this is gonna be just like incredibly basic, you know? Um, so, you know, if we look at this, uh, this is Outlook right now. This is actually my personal Outlook. And, I, and, and this is Outlook on the web. So you can, you can see here that I have mail. Um, I, if, by clicking in these things, what's weird about Outlook on, and I, I swear by the web-based version, I, I kind of really like it. Um, you know, I do have the um, installed version as well to show you. And um, it has views into different email uh, workbooks. So, so for our demonstration today, what would be awesome is if, um, could you send me some emails right now? Like those of you in the audience, um, if you could send me some emails to this email address, which is lportx-rm at outlook.com, right? lportx-rm at outlook.com. I'm actually going to put this in the chat widget because I would, in chat, actually, if you don't mind, uh, if you could put that in the chat widget for me. Um, <clears throat> lportx-rm at outlook.com. Um, if you guys could send me an email to that, um, then I'll be able to use that in my presentations. So let me just do that real quick. Oh, there he goes. Check. Yeah, send, send me something, send me attachments. Send me something that we can use during this demonstration. Uh, send me a picture of your dogs, your cats, your favorite recipes, whatever it is. And uh, then, you know, we'll, we'll be able to use those in the product demonstration, but go ahead and send those on in, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, uh, so you have email, you have calendar. And one of the things that I like to do, because if you go to, um, if you click on the calendar widget, right? It's gonna replace your uh, email. So what I like to do is I like to use control click or right click with my mouse. And I like to, on that calendar widget, and I say, open link in new window, right? And now I have my mail in one tab and I have my calendar in another, instead of having to like switch back and forth in the same tab, okay? Now, these are very bulky applications to run in a browser. So the one thing that I will tell you is that they can, they can make this, the memory footprint on your browser huge. So in other words, what does that mean? That means that it can make your entire computer slow down. Um, and it certainly can make any web site slow down. Because if, you are, if, if you're one of those kind of people that has a ton of tabs open and you know who you are um, in your browser and you're, you have a news site open, you have your legal research site open, let's say you have Rocket Matter open and you, know, you have a couple other things open, maybe you have a Magic Share open, um, you are going to be slow. Your browser is going to be slow if you have, especially if you have mail in one tab and calendar in another. So keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> all right. Now, um, aside from these two major pieces of functionality, here's the other things that it has, right? Um, oh, look, we're starting to get some emails. All right, wonderful. So um, we have the emails. We also have, um, you know, contacts. So, and, and in this, what I have here, this is my desktop based version of Outlooks and I have three accounts attached to it. I have the one that I just told you about, which is lportx-rm at outlook.com. And this is just one I use for demonstration purposes and tests. Um, and then I have my work one, which is larry.port at rocketmatter.com. And then I have a Gmail account because the, the desktop version allows you to like, um, it's just really an email client. So we can point to any email database, even Gmail. So um, I, can, I can have all my accounts consolidated in Outlook, which is a really nice thing to be able to do. Um, now, the, what they also do is they have, okay, so they have a checkbox and they have notes, 
So, um, and here's my sentiment on this. Um, I'm not a fan of their like to-do lists and their notes. Is anybody, is anybody like really into using tasks and lists and things like that? Because I mean, they do have uh, task functionality. So let's say uh, perform research for case X, Y, Z. Okay, now if you notice also what happened when I clicked that. So I clicked this and it opened a tab in my browser. You see that? And when I clicked it again, now I have two tabs open in my browser. So it's not cleanly integrated and it's not very elegant. So I'm not a fan of this. Um, but if we go onto this thing, let's see, what kind of options do I have? Like there's things that you can do. Like what's nice about it is that there's reminders and due dates which will appear on your calendar. Um, but eh, I'm not a fan of that either. Somebody said that because I use other tools, I use um, uh, a lot of our attorneys that use Rocket Matter. We have a full task system in Rocket Matter where you can assign things for different people. You can bill off of them and so on and so forth. Um, and I use Asana, uh, which is a project management tool uh, to keep track of all my work. And that has a much more powerful task tracking functionality. You can organize in projects and have all these different views. So, you know, really personally, my usage of Outlook is kind of limited to the emails, contacts, and uh, calendars. In fact, from a contact perspective, the only reason I use it is so that, like, my main contact record is on my iPhone. Like, that's where all of my contacts are. Um, you know, our attorneys that use Outlook and Rocket Matter, their main uh, contacts are in Rocket Matter and their phones, you know. But uh, the, the reason that the contacts are good is it like helps you autofill people's information as you go through things. So um, like as you're working on an email, it makes it easier to send an email to somebody, to add somebody to a calendar invite and, and so on and so forth. But that's, to me, that's the true value of using the contact records. Um, there's also notes. So somebody said they were a big fan of notes. So let me show you notes. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's do this. Let's add a note. Okay, and if you noticed, notes two, instead of opening inside of the little native application that I had downloaded, I don't know if you caught that little subtlety, but I'm in my Mac version of Outlook. And when I clicked on the note, it opened a new browser tab. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's exactly what happened right there. All right, so uh, let's add a note. It says tap a note button to create a note. All right, so let's, let's tap the note button. All right, let's do it. All right, great. Where is it? Uh, any day now. Okay, where's my note button? So it's like, you know, first of all, it's a it's a little bit goofy on how to do things, you know, um, just not very natural. Let's see if I can do it in here it might, and give you like a more of a, a better demonstration. Still, it's it's just not the most intuitive piece of software, you know? I mean, tap the add note button to create a note. You tell me where it is. So, I mean, I guess most people are using Evernote and uh, OneNote for notes and OneNote is quite powerful. So, you know, it's, it's definitely something that you're gonna wanna take a look. Um, so, okay. All right, so let's do this. Let me show you a note. By the way, the, the, the blue button is up here in the upper left-hand corner. It's just nowhere where your like consciousness is. All right, so let's, so it opens like this enormous sticky note and you can do things in it. Like here is information for you all today. We can insert a picture. Let's do a screenshot. Actually, let's do my favorite new picture that I just got. This is an awesome picture that everybody's gonna love. Okay. All right, but let's say I want to um, let's say I want to like you know move this picture around because it's not in the right place, or I want to move this text. So I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to cut it. Right, I'm going to cut it. So I was playing around with this earlier today, and this is hard to use. It really is. Like I can't even like move my cursor properly. There's it's very very buggy. So like again with like notes. Um, oh, and check out. Take a look at this. Something went wrong. And we have what is known as a stack trace in software engineering, which tells me exactly where the error took place. Now, I think, um, you know, maybe if you want to keep it uh, 
to simple usages and just take a little bit of notes, then you have everything in one place. But I think notes is like very poor. Uh, I'm not impressed with the functionality at all. I'm not impressed with the to do functionality at all. Obviously, it's mail and calendar is like kind of where it's at. Um, so that's my suggestion to you that if you want to do have a to do or task tracker, use an external application for it. Um, sure, you can use Outlook, um, and you can, and it, it's very limited functionality. But I would recommend you use a legal practice management tool like Rocket Matter for your task tracking, or a dedicated like task tracking app like something like Remember the Milk or Asana or something like that. Um, <clears throat> also, in terms of notes, not a fan of what they have for notes. So I would highly recommend that you use OneNote or Evernote instead. So just my observation, just my thoughts. Okay, let's see. Um, so that's kind of an overview of the core functionality of like what you can do inside of Outlook, you know? So, <clears throat> all right, let's do this uh, next. The one thing that I really wanna like talk to you guys about is um, keyboard shortcuts. So um, people that are participating with the chat, are you guys big keyboard fans or are you big mice fans? So I'd like to hear like, because I, I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts and I'll tell you why. It just makes life so much easier and so much faster to kind of move around your application, right? Um, it, it just, um, and, and the one thing that I would say about email is this, is that my, my suggestion for email is that you need to become, like you need to become an email force and with the volume of email that we have. And so you need a bunch of tools and tips to learn how to use it. And uh, you need to kind of approach it like you're going to dominate it and you're going to own it. And otherwise email just spirals out of control. And I think it's a bad thing. Um, <clears throat> so somebody wrote mice since I use a Mac. Whether or not you use a Mac doesn't really dictate whether or not you can use keyboard shortcuts, right? Um, so like it, using keyboard shortcuts uh, makes you just much faster and much more proficient on things. So I, I put the ones that I use um, all the time. So uh, composing a message, shuffling through messages, uh, and there's one that I really like that they have on the Mac that they don't have anywhere else. They don't have it on PC or online. Um, there's one which is when you delete a window, if the window is open, it'll close that window. Otherwise it just keeps it open. Um, marking messages as read in archiving a selected message. Now with these, you can do a lot of damage because, and maybe some of you are using keyboard shortcuts and you don't even really know about it. So let's go over here. Let's go into Outlook, right? Okay. So if I, like, if I click on this one and I click on basically, uh, oops, I'm clicking on the wrong keys here. So Outlook for, um, which one am I in? Right. So here, if I click control, of course, it's not working right now. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, I'll go over to Outlook for Windows. And let's do this one. This, okay. All right, keyboard is best. All right. So what I'm doing right now is I'm using my keyboard to go to just quickly navigate through all of my emails. Now, so that may seem like, um, like very elementary and very basic. But for those of you that like take that extra second to click, I, I suggest your, your fingers do not leave the keyboard. Like the fastest you'll possibly be with email is if you um, just don't let your fingers leave, right? Now, what I can do here is I can hit like control E and that archives a message. So his message, uh, sayonara, it's gone, right? Um, so control E really quickly does something. If I want to do um, uh, command uh, new, that creates a new message, right? Um, it doesn't reply to anybody. It just creates a new message. Now I'm doing everything. You can't really, you have to take my word for it. I'm not, I'm doing all of this without anybody like, um, you know, without anything happening at all, right? I'm, I'm not like lifting. I'm not using a mouse or anything altogether. Um, then if I, I can start typing people in, 
and their names come out. We can just do this. Okay. And then uh, send. That one I'm using my mouse for. You can see my mouse move because I don't know that command. But um, in here, if I, um, the big one is uh, command R. Now I can reply to him directly. Oh, and actually command enter is what gets it to send without lifting your keys. So you can work entirely through all of your, all of your emails without taking your hands off the keyboard. And that may seem like a small thing. Trust me, it is not. It is a major, major, major productivity win. It makes it a lot faster to process your email. I highly recommend it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to send out a um, keyboard short, shortcut uh, cheat sheet that we've developed. Um, for Mac, PC, and online, that's not just these like six little items here, my favorites. Um, it's a bunch of them. And so you'll be able to get that. And I, what I would suggest you do is if, if, just trust me on this, if you don't use the keyboard shortcuts, practice it for like five minutes and try it for one day and see if you ever switch back. Um, it's really, really good. Okay. Um, the next thing I think in, in terms of like completely dominating your inbox, right, is something called SaneBox. So I can talk about that. But before I do that, um, I think there's some questions coming in. So I just want to take a look. Can you create custom shortcuts to, for example, move emails to a SaneBox folder? There's, there are the ability to create custom uh, shortcuts and, and keyboard mappings. Um, there's a lot of capability there. Like, especially on the web, like if you go to the web and you go, um, it's kind of funny, you type, so what I just did here is I, I'm in the web and I, I went to settings. By the way, if you're in the web and at any time you wanna know what the keyboard shortcuts are, you just hit question mark, okay? And they pop up. So that's all I did, I, I just hit the question mark and, and, it, and it tells you all these keyboard shortcuts right here. Um, keyboard shortcuts are such a big deal that if you look them up in here, in Outlook, then it gives you a choice. So you can see, you know, how I was showing you that there's a difference between the desktop based version of Outlook and, you know, the online version of Outlook. Um, you can choose that preference in here. Um, you can turn them off altogether and uh, you can use the Gmail ones, which that's where I first fell in love with keyboard shortcuts with email because Gmails were really, really powerful. And then when I moved over to Outlook, I just moved along as well. Um, where is command on the keyboard? If you're using a um, PC, you don't have a command button. Uh, so the, the keyboard shortcuts are different. Uh, so for, in, for instance, where it says command N for com compose a new message, you're gonna hit control N. Uh, if you're using a Mac, the command key uh, is usually to the left and to the right of the space bar. And it has, it looks like a square with little circles around it, right? <clears throat> Um, somebody's sending me a, a, a specific configuration question. Our master calendar doesn't sync with our assigned attorney. We have to go in and make the appointment again in her own calendar. Any way to fix that? That's a question for your IT person because that's a configuration setting. When you have an issue like that, when you have an issue where somebody's calendar isn't syncing or doing something, that's, um, that's usually going to require somebody who is an IT professional or understands how things are connected in order to make that um, work. Um, that's not like a feature in Outlook that you can just do. You're, you're going to, somebody's going to need to understand, Joan, your specific environment and um, what tweaks to do in order to solve that problem. Um, <clears throat> now, over on the uh, Outlook side of things, not to, uh, you know, um, kill this whole topic here, but there's all sorts of things that you can uh, set up here in terms of like keyboard uh, Con, uh, and, and you can customize things in here. The one thing I will tell you though, is um, if you are, <sighs> if, if once you set up Outlook and install it on your machine, the one thing that you might want to think about is the notifications. I, I find that they're um, navigating through their preferences is uh, quite a chore. Now, if when you do this, you click on one of the preferences, you have to go over here and click show all to get back to everything else. But to me, one of the most important things that you wanna take a look at when you first install Outlook, by the way, 
is you want to look at your notifications because they can be super annoying. Now, um, the way I got here was I clicked um, Outlook Preferences. And in Windows, it's going to be usually under like settings or something like that. And it, it, it'll be called either preferences or settings on, on Windows. It'll be called a little bit different. But this is the this is the dialogue box in the software that's going to help you stop losing your mind because this is the one that controls all of the sounds that happen whenever a new message comes in. And they like to play sounds for everything. They think they're the freaking New York Philharmonic at Outlook because they're always making sounds. So I'm turning them all off. And furthermore, I don't like to have alerts. I, I'm One of the things about me and my relationship to email is that I only look at it when I want to. I don't look at it when email wants me to look at it, right? So I close down Outlook and I open it when I want to read it. Um, I'm not getting notifications on my phone that I have a new email that I have to check. Um, I check very periodically to see what's going on. And even though you're an attorney and you think there's no way I could do that, my clients couldn't do that, that's not true because you go to hearings. And when you go to a hearing and when you're in the courtroom, um, you have to turn off your phone. You're not checking Outlook or email at that time. So it's very important in order to get control and master email to um, make sure, in my opinion, that you do what you can do to turn your notifications off. I know that sounds like complete like uh, blasphemy uh, to a lot of people. And that's like a controversial stance. But I think it's very important because the other thing is that the way that these reminders and these notifications work is they, they take advantage of your kind of like primordial lizard brain. So you're working and working on something and all of a sudden you scan danger on the horizon whenever one of the notifications and to you that's like a saber toothed tiger because that's bred into your like DNA. So what you got to do is just like take control of it again, right? And, um, and just say no. So I like to turn all of my notifications off. I know that's a little bit weird, but I, I think it's very important. Okay. Um, <clears throat> gotcha. Any other questions while we're here taking a break from things? So um, one thing I want to show you guys now is, well, I, I was starting to talk about SaneBox. I'm going to talk about SaneBox for a minute or two. And then um, we're going to start taking a look at some more, like some additional tools that are going to blow your mind that are like super, super helpful uh, to have when you're using Outlook. So. Um, <clears throat> okay, so SaneBox is pretty awesome, and it works not just on um, Outlook, but it also works on Google Mail as well, right? So Gmail. So, um, and the whole idea is, and you can go and watch the video, but you have a couple of uh, email boxes called Sane Later and Sane News, um, and and you can you can configure SaneBox. Like if you look at this, I have this, I have these. Let me see if I can make that bigger so you can see them. If you look right here where my cursor is, there's Sane Archive, there's Sane Later, and Sane News. And um, what you do is over time, you start training um, Sane Later, right? Um, so look, it looks like somebody emailed me. Hello, you mentioned you'd be able to sell an outline on uh, CLE. So this was from the webinar today. This ended up in Sane Later. Michael emailed me. I haven't really interacted with Michael before, at, at least to my knowledge. So what? So so I check saying later for potential like kind of you know people that I want to make sure that I'm in contact with. And there's no reason why I would want to sing later, Michael. There's no reason why I would why he's like suspect spam. So I'm going to move him into my inbox, and then from there on, same box is not going to put him in saying later. He's got, same box is going to put him right into my inbox. Okay. But all these other people that are kind of like trying to sell me stuff and so on and so forth um, end up here, right? And these are ones that I consider to be kind of like, you know, pending or doubtful or something like that. So, um, you know, with the, with the pending or the doubtful ones or whatever, like, you know, it could be something I want to see. I might want to see my Asana updates. I might want to see some of these things, but they're not things that like I need to, I need to see. Um, for things that I think are fairly not unimportant, um, they go insane news. So it's things that I'm not going to check and maybe I'll scan. I like looking at attorney at work. They actually write some interesting things, things on law.com, you know. <coughs> but a lot of this stuff 
I just never need to check. I mean, imagine if I didn't have this, this would all end up in my inbox. And so, I mean, there's, you know, a you, you end up spending all day going through this kind of stuff. So what same box allows you to do is really only focus on the things that you want to focus on. And, and there, it's different than a junk filter because junk is really supposed to filter out just junk. This stuff isn't junk, but it's stuff I might want to pay attention to. And Outlook has its own built-in thing called focused and others. And if you look at others, then there's other things in here that, um, you know, that Outlook itself is is uh, doing rules on. Oh, by the way, look, if you see here, Michael's thing is now in my inbox, which is great. Um, by the way, while I'm here, there's one thing I want to show you guys that might drive you a little bit crazy if you're not aware of the feature, but there's a view called conversation view, which I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, was um, <clears throat> created by Google. Let's see. Let's see, da, 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 da. Outlook. You know, it's easier just to show you here in regular Outlook. So if I look in um, regular Outlook, this is the desktop based Outlook. Outlook. Um, you see that there's this back and forth between Roberto and Anna. There's like three emails back and forth. So there's this conversation view. If I show this as conversation, then what happens is that they all kind of get grouped together. Now that can be kind of dangerous because there might be emails in here that you, you're afraid that you're missing. The advantage is, is that it groups the chain together. So it makes it easier to follow what's going on. But if, if you have this configuration and you don't like it, what's going on is that you have your email box set for uh, conversations. So if you uncheck that, they'll all expand out again. Okay. So that's an important thing. Okay. So we talked about keyboard shortcuts, we talked about um, SaneBox, um, we talked about the conversations a little bit, and these are ways to kind of like reclaim the sanity over uh, your, your email in your inbox. There's another one too called uh, Inbox Zero that I want to show you in a little bit. That's a pretty handy trick. But right now, what I'd like to do, Chad, is if you want to like cue up your microphone in uh, your face and uh, hop on board, and you can kind of take over the screen share if you're ready. Are you ready, Chad? Yeah, are you able to hear me okay? Perfect. Okay, awesome. so I'll stop my share. Great. Let me get my screen pulled up for you guys. So Chad is coming to us live from Kansas, Kansas City. And his product is uh, this thing called Imagine Share. And what, what I really like about this is that it takes e-signature, which if you're not using e-signature, you got to use it. And it puts it directly into Outlook. So, um, and so I thought it was worth having him on just to show us what it does. Yeah, thank you for that introduction, Larry. And thank you for having me on today. I really appreciate it. And thank you to everybody who's attending today as well. I know you guys are all very busy. So I am very pleased to be able to talk to you guys today. Um, as Larry mentioned, um, our product is primarily for secure file sharing and electronic signature. Um, and we work primarily, if not exclusively, with professional service providers such as attorneys and accountants. Um, so we, we kind of live and breathe that uh, professional service space. And something that we found, of course, is that you guys need to stay uh, in your inbox, you know, as much as you can. And you guys see these messages, just how much time, how many emails you guys get, how that's really a place where you guys spend a lot of time. Um, so from a product perspective, Imagine Time realized, hey, we need to give these attorneys and lawyers a, an application that allows them to share files and get electronic signatures from their prospects and from their clients without needing to go to another application. Like you guys don't need another application. You don't need another tab open. Um, you, you're spending enough time in your inbox as it is. Um, so what, what can we do to meet you guys there? Uh, so what we built and what I'm about to show you guys today is our Outlook plugin. Um, we also have this as a print driver from your desktop and as a Chrome extension as well. So if you guys don't want to use Outlook, we have a Chrome extension as well. Um, but I'll go ahead and just launch it here in the Outlook window on Outlook Online. This also works just fine if you guys are a desktop user. And as I mentioned, we've got our three options, send files, request files, and request signature. You're gonna get files from your clients, send files to your clients, request signatures from your clients. That being said, earlier in this, uh, earlier in this webinar, we saw just a, a huge amount of you guys really rely on electronic signature right behind practice management. It was the number one thing that you guys were concerned about was electronic signature. 
Um, so we make it really, really easy to get electronic signatures from your prospects here with, with Imagine Share. All I have to do is open up that plugin just like I did, select request signature, and then you're gonna select your engagement letter. You can drag and drop or just look in the file explorer. So I've got a nice little legal engagement letter here that I'm gonna select. And I can choose to associate this with a client if I'd like to, and I just created a new one today for legal prospect. So I'm gonna hit next. And then all I have to do here is click template and select custom template. And what's gonna launch here is a nice little window. Um, so instead of like a DocuSign or a HelloSign or something like that, where you actually have to go to their application um, to request that signature, you can do this directly from within your inbox. So this is gonna allow you to come over here. I can drag a little date box here, get that in the right spot and then get the signature over here. So it's just the date and the signature and it's that easy. I hit finished. I'm gonna say who's signing it. I've already got somebody associated with this account or I can just add someone new here. I'm just gonna send it to myself, say Chad Thomas, and that's my personal email and I'm gonna hit create link. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna take that document. It's going to put the signature blocks onto the document and anybody that uses DocuSign or HelloSign, as I said earlier, you're gonna be very familiar with this workflow. And then it injects that link into the body of the email. Um, but as I mentioned, what's, what's special about this is, you know, you don't have to go to a different app. You don't have to send the document from DocuSign and they think it's a phishing email or it goes to their spam. You can send them a signature request from your inbox and it comes from your email. So your business domain of, uh, you know, your law practice, or your law firm. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to click send on that. And that's going to go to my personal email. And then I'm going to jump over here real quick to Imagine Share and I'm going to log out because it'll know that I'm not the signer if I try to do it. And here I am in my um, email. I got an email for myself, Chad Thomas, engagement letter, saying, hi, Chad, thank you for your time earlier. Please review and sign this. So I'm the prospect. I got the email. I'm in Gmail right now. I'm opening this thing up. So I'm going to go ahead and click this button to launch it. One of the nice things about this is that when you um, are using um, an application like this, like I, I keep on getting things from, like people want me to sign things from DocuSign, from Right Signature, from HelloSign. There's so many different things that people are, so all these different tools. And, you know, junk filters and spam filters and same box, like I just demonstrated, are so good at like um, filtering this kind of stuff out. It usually takes me a long time to find out what somebody sent me uh, so that I can uh, use it. So, um, <laughs> As I'll just, I'll just apologize. My internet has decided to fight me here. It's not loading my link. Okay. Um, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, so in any case, the, what's nice about this is that it doesn't just, it's not that you can just author the document from your email, but you can actually, um, when you receive it, it's from, it, it's from the attorney. It's from whoever is using the application. And then the client can do it, and then um, and then everything's good. So, Chad, while you're uh, fighting that thing, uh, yeah, this is of course I tested it right before this network just okay. fine, and now I've got the uh, some yeah, no give, me, give me just one second, guys. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen, and we'll go um, back over to my screen for one second. Well, um, you know, we take a look at that thing. Um, <clears throat> okay. So you can see my screen now. Um, the other thing that uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about is, um, as we go through this, is, and, and this isn't something that's not necessarily like Outlook related, but it's definitely something that is related to um, uh, using it and mastering it and not letting it take over your life, which I think is kind of like the theme that I want to talk here. Um, and it's called Inbox Zero. So Inbox Zero is, it, it's, it's, a, it's a special kind of way of doing things. It's, and, and if you take a look at like, this is my work account and I have this folder called a to-do folder right here, right? Um, if you look at my Gmail account, which is kind of like my personal account, I also have um, a to-do folder there as well, right? So, you know, when I'm in here, you know, what I do is I, uh, there's really, there's four Ds and the Ds are these. So, Delegate or delete is the number one. And that should be like, you should be trigger happy with deletes on emails. Delegate is the next one, defer and do. So there's really only four actions you can do when you have an email. 
Um, you can just knock it out right away, defer it, do it later. I'm doing going backwards now, delegate, send it to somebody else or delete it. Most things are gonna be deleted until you get same box. <laughs> then you'll find, and once you get that under control, then you'll find that the stuff that appears in your inbox are things that you actually have to do one of these three things. But um, let's take a look at, uh, and, and what's interesting is that, I, does anybody else use this? I would like to see your chat widgets, but if you look at my, this is my work email. I really only have um, four things. So I have this email from Michael, right? That's going to go in my to-do box. So that's done. Um, this is nothing I have to deal with. So I'm going to archive it. This too, archive, 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 and archive. All right. So I have, it's called zero inbox because this is my work inbox and I have zero items in it, right? Um, again, let me kind of like demonstrate that with the emails that you uh, sent me earlier, right? So if I click on my inbox right here, um, you know, I can, let's leave this one as is. But if I go to this um, next one, okay, um, I'm gonna archive this one. Uh, I'm gonna archive this one. Maybe this one I put into to-do, right? So I don't have a to-do folder here, so I could like go ahead and like easily make one. Um, but you get the idea, you, you, you go through things and you make them um, so that you, either forward it to somebody who needs to do the work, you delete it immediately, you archive it, or, and archiving and deleting is more or less the same kind of thing because there's so much storage, unless you have something with a huge attachment, um, you know, or, or you just get rid of it and answer it right then and there. So, so if you haven't tried Inbox Zero, it's incredibly, it's amazing how powerful it is and what a great way it is to uh, uh, do deal with email. Now, let me show you also, so this is the same inbox that I have in Outlook, right? So if we take a look here, okay. Larry, just, just so you're, just so you know, I'm, I'm all set whenever you're ready to. All right, yeah, I'll show one more thing. Um, just wanna make sure. So, so Imagine Share is, one, is a great tool for you guys to use. And I also wanna show what we have. So if you're using a practice management software, the nice thing is, is that we have this like integration with it. Um, so when you're using Outlook, because, Let's face it, you're like kind of email and document professionals. So what we do is just kind of, um, let's just, here we go. Yes, I'm permissioning this app. So uh, Outlook is through this plugin is connected to my practice management program. So I can search for all my matters here and they'll show up. So if I type in Sky, I can see all the different like Sky Brothers client, like things that I have. So let me pick a uh, Hobbs complaint. And then all my users are in the system too. So I can bill on behalf of, let's say that I'm using this as Sally Jones and I picked today's date and I worked on this. Uh, I've been corresponding with this person. I want to associate 2.3 billing units and I want to have a description. And let's say that this um, JPEG is very important for our case. So I want the, this attachment that's in there, right? So, and then now I'm going to save it. And when I log into the system, right? And when I go to that matter, I'll be able to go to my emails, my matter emails, and I'll be able to see it. So here's the email from John as requested. And it's that picture of the Zeppelin or the blimp or whatever it is over New York City, which is an awesome picture, by the way. Um, <clears throat> so, so that's kind of how that whole thing works. So that that's how your like practice management program and email program can tie together, which is very good. All right. So um, now if I stop my share and we show how the uh, signature kind of thing works, you want to take yeah, a look? Sorry about that, guys. I was linked up on my demo account instead of production. So that explains all my issues. Um, so if, if you just recall our flow that we had here, um, I just sent this to my prospect. It was a legal engagement letter. Uh, the client came here and opened it up in their Gmail, came to this URL here. They just type in their email address and hit done. And now they're going to be prompted to sign this document. And this is all going to be white labeled for your guys' firm. You know, no, none of our branding or anything up there, firm name. So I'm just going to say start signing. The client's going to be able to review the engagement letter. And then since you guys are the best attorneys on the planet, I have no doubt that they're going to accept. So I'm going to go ahead and sign. So I just need to date it. And then it's going to ask me to, I can either do a signature like this, which that's just torturous, 
or I can do it typed with the keyboard. So I'll save myself the embarrassment and just do type with the keyboard, hit a dot signature and apply signature. So you'll see that's been dated and signed. Then I'm going to click finish. And now there's going to be a couple things that happen um, after the client clicks finish on this document. Um, the first thing that's going to happen is the document on this screen right here is going to be available for the client to download. So if I were to come here as the client and I click download, you'll see sure enough, it's been signed down there at the bottom. The client also is going to get an email saying that, hey, your file's been completed. You know, there's, there's a link to it as well. And this is going to be your logo again, not our logo. And then if we come back to my inbox, I can see here that as I, now this is my inbox as the attorney. So I can see that, hey, my prospect has indeed signed the document, which is fantastic. So now I can go access that document. And something that we do a little bit differently. And again, you guys have only really seen our plugin. So what I did want to show you guys was we do have a web app behind this as well. So if we jump into our web app and I get logged in here and I go to my firm, which is Imagine Time, and then I want to go to this legal prospect, um, if I can type correctly, I want to go to this legal prospect workspace and I can go to their files and you'll see right here that this was the unsigned legal engagement letter that was sent. And then this is the signed copy that was returned to us after the client signed. So if we click on that to preview it, we can scroll down, actually it's the next page, and we can see the, uh, the signature and the date there. So that's the whole workflow is you're inside your inbox, you upload the document, you say where it needs to be signed, you create the link, send it to your client, get the signature, your client has the signed document, you have the signed document. And then I, yeah, I will get, go ahead, go ahead, Larry. Well, the reason I wanted to show, um, I wanted you guys to see this product is because I think e-signature is very important for attorneys, especially ones that aren't using it. And the, the majority of the people on this call aren't using it. And this is a way to use it without having to venture into a whole nother tool. So uh, for example, um, like you don't have to go into DocuSign, you don't have to like go into another tool. It's right from within Outlook, which I think is extremely valuable. Uh, and somebody just had an excellent question regarding the audit trail. Um, our signatures are fulfilled by a sure sign. You don't ever have to see a sure sign and we're gonna be pulling this data into our account as well. Um, but I'll go ahead and show you guys what that looks like uh, just cause I know that that's super important. Um, so if we go to... Hey Chad, you know what I might do is I might um, uh, like take this one offline because we still oh. have a couple minutes. Yeah. yeah, 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 no problem. Uh, but just, just I can... Rest, rest assured that that data is available. IP address, timestamps, all the good stuff that you need for electronic signatures there. Yeah, awesome. So the one thing that I think in, in addition to like Imagine Time, that is like a really fantastic tool for attorneys to use. So like, let's say that I need to book a meeting between me and Chad, and we've all been there. We've all had to do this, right? And, and like somebody else on my team, right? So let's say that, Okay, Roberto, who is our like, um, you know, CTO, and let's say uh, Chad, um, they have to be on a meeting with me. And let's let's make it even more complicated. Let's get uh, our support, our head of support. So Kim, all right. Now um, let's meet. This is the age old problem. How are we going to quickly find a time for all these other people to meet? So I have this tool called Find Time. Um, it's down here somewhere. There's always these two. So, so find time is really cool. So what it's going to do is it's going to show me, it's going to pop this widget up here and it's going to kind of show, it's going to have a lot of insight into everybody's availability because we're all in the same organization. So like I have insight, like uh, Imagine Share is part of our parent company as well. So I have uh, access to everybody's calendar there. But if, so if I look through this kind of stuff, I can see that um, okay, Roberto's not available here. Everybody's available at this time. So, so, so it's really helpful for me to be able to schedule a meeting. Um, what happens if somebody's external? Um, so let me copy one of the emails that I got in my other email folder, just so you can see it. Um, so John, let's use this one. Okay. So, so John's email is not something that I have access to through my calendar. And let's say that we want to schedule a meeting with John. So <clears throat> now what happens? Well, John's a little opaque to us. So we're not going to really necessarily be able to see John's calendar. 
So he comes kind of grayed out, right? But at least I know where the other people are all available, right? So what I can do there is I can uh, find a time, I can do this, and I can do this and this. So I have three times nominated. Um, and let's see what happens. So what it does is now there's three times that people can choose from. And it's in my, it's, it's right there in my email. So, so the, by, I, I didn't even have to look up their calendars. I just addressed them in the email block. So I added Roberto, Chad, Kim, and John to in, in the to field of my email, fired up find time, and it went and did the rest of the work for me, inserted this link into my email. If I were to send this out, everybody, it would really confuse people. So I'm not going to do that, but um, it would, it would allow them to kind of take a look and schedule a time. And then we'd all be copacetic. Um, <clears throat> so those are like some of the goodies that we have for you. Now, somebody was asking, okay, which of these features are part of Out Outlook and which of them aren't? So zero inbox isn't even a product. Zero inbox is a methodology to use for your email, right? Um, so going back, SaneBox, that's a third-party product, right? It's not included in Outlook. Uh, what I just showed you, find time, that can be, um, uh, you can get that through the Microsoft Store. Um, I believe it is a third-party product, but it is free. I think it's like in part of like Microsoft's universe or something like that. Uh, I showed you Rocket Matter, the plugin. Uh, Rocket Matter is per user per month. It's a full practice management and time and billing application. And for the user that said they had trouble invoicing people, it can like send out all your invoices at once through email. So um, you might want to like reach out to me, Larry.port, and I can at rocketmatter.com and I can explain more to you. Um, and then we sh we took a look at the Imagine Share plugin, which does a lot more than just um, you know e signature. But, you know, you can send files back and forth through Outlook, but their Outlook plugin is like a must have, in my opinion, for attorney. So it's really, really good. Um, and that's a third party application as well. Um, for those of you that are on the application today, we do have a, a, a promotion for you guys. Um, so you can get 50% off your first year of Rocket Matter if you sign up uh, during the month of June. Um, and then six months of reduced rates for credit card processing, which is 2.75% and 20 cents per transaction when you do your credit card processing through us, through LexCharge, which is the Rocket Matter uh, processor. And, um, and Chad was very generous since he like popped on our webinar today to be able to throw in 100 free signatures. Is it, what's, the, what's the specific deal, Chad? You tell us. Uh, so if you guys sign up for a monthly subscription, um, you guys can get free 100 signatures. We also offer an annual subscription as well for Imagine Share. But either way, you'll get free 100 signatures if you sign up uh, within the next week. Yeah, so if you do that, just reference the Rocket Matter webinar and they'll, they'll know what you're talking about. Um, you guys, here's the CLE code. It's 5290. You get one hour of general plus one hour of technology credit. Um, again, that's 5290. Nine zero. The recording of this plus the PowerPoint presentation is going to be distributed to everybody tomorrow. Um, if you want to reach me, again, it's larry.port at rocketmatter.com. And Chad, I went and did you a solid or not and put your email in front of the hundreds of people that are on this webinar. Hey, that's perfect. If you guys need anything at all, feel free to reach out. It'll just go in my sane box. Uh, for those that you want to stick around, let me just take a look at my um, Chad uh, or uh, my chat, not my chat. <laughs> Um, somebody said, can you tell us how to do timekeeping with Outlook for invoices? Um, I mean, yeah, I can show you, I can demonstrate that for if those of you that want to stick on, want to see how to do like kind of an invoicing flow through Outlook, um, I can demonstrate that right now. Um, that's not a problem. So uh, that was Natalie's question. But for the rest of you, uh, if you're here for the CLE and you're ready to go, ready to go, this will take literally two minutes if you want to stick around. Um, <clears throat> okay, so a lot of the invoicing is not going to be done through Outlook. It's going to be done uh, through the invoicing application that is going to um, also be able to send out emails on your behalf, right? So that's the first thing to know. Um, the second thing to know is um, it like it all ties into your whole billing system. From Outlook, you can capture time. Like if we went into this uh, matter that we were working with before, Let's see, let's go over there. Um, and I'll, let me make this screen bigger. If you see, I uploaded John's email that had the attachment of the blimp or the Zeppelin in it. 
um, and I click this window. And remember, I typed in 2.3 hours. So the 2.3 hours was captured in my practice management application. Let me just show that one more time, just for the um, non-believers out there. So um, we have a family law attorney. They sent me an email on the CLE earlier. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna associate it with the same matter just so we can see it. So I'm gonna type in a couple of letters. Hobbs complaint, there it is. And let's say the billing user again is Sally. Um, the billing date is today. The billing units, let's make it so that we all remember it. So let's say it's 1.7, lucky number seven. And we'll call this one um, extra time demo. And then why not? Let's upload the brochure, let's save it. And it happens very fast um, actually. So if I go back to this page and I reload it, we should see the email there. Okay, so there it is, right? And if I click on this, it should say 1.7, there we are. All right, uh, let's send, let, let's make sure that this email is set up for email demonstration purposes, right? Um, <clears throat> so let me edit it and let's take a look at who the billing recipient is. So every matter in Rocket Matter um, can have an associated person who can receive it. Um, it can receive any kind of invoices related to it. All this other stuff is like not germane to the subject of email, but are things that you typically see when you set up a matter. So let's say I want to share this invoice and let's share it with me since um, we need to demonstrate it. And let's do it via email. You can also send a portal out and let's use that Lport X RM at Outlook email address. So let's click add. Um, and I'll save that. Now, and, and keep in mind that you don't always necessarily want the, uh, the client is not always the person that you want to send the invoice to in, in some cases, like usually there might be a billing representative at a company or so on and so forth. So that's why I you, you have the flexibility of doing that. Let's go to matter billing and let's run an invoice. Now I'm doing this on one invoice, but I'll show you, there's a way that you can do this across all of your invoices, or you can filter you know, all of your invoices from one attorney or something like that. So is this a pre-bill or an invoice? This is an invoice. What format do I want? I want a PDF. Um, and I don't want to transfer from trust. Um, this matter has a trust balance, but for demonstration purposes, I want to send out an actual invoice. And I'm going to confirm and off to the races. Now it does a couple of things, right? So um, it, it creates the invoice, it emails the invoice and it saves the invoice to your matter, right? Uh, and it also adjusts any ledgers that I have. So if we take a look here in Rocket Matter, you'll see this ledger balance of $3,000 down here. So here you go. This was the invoice that we just sent right now. And you can see there's like a little envelope here. So hopefully, okay, so there it goes. So your current invoice for, for Hobbs complaint. And so it was automatically emailed, right? Um, and if I click on the invoice, it's gonna show me what it looks like. I can download it, I can print it, I can do whatever I want. Um, and, and, and the kind of cool thing from your perspective is that if I reload this page, actually, let me make sure, let me show you this first. Let me go over here. I can keep track of what the client is seeing. So if the client has gotten to this page, this is the link from the email to pay online. So um, let's say I pick a couple of fields, Boca Raton, Florida. This is where Rocket Matters headquarters is, uh, 33496 USA. And the credit card number 411. This is a bogus credit card number that I can use for demonstration purposes. The one, and I pick anything in the future for my expiration date. But before I pay this, let's say that I didn't pay this and I'm just kind of, you know, lollygagging and not paying. So, and I'm the attorney over here and I want to say, you know what, is this guy even like looked at my invoice? Well, yes, he has because now the little envelope is opened. Um, so he's seen my invoice and I can click this button. I can resend it again if I want to. Um, over here though, if I, let's say that I am like on, on point and I pay it right away and we do see people pay it like same day, which is kind of cool. Um, so I'm paying this like monster $3,000 bill. I go back into my Rocket Matter ledger for my um, 
in, to keep track of my payments for my clients. I can see that an online payment has already been posted. So this really it, you know, removes a lot of steps uh, for people. And not only that, but the way it works is you're going to get your you're going to get your funds in about one day, if not, or two days. So that the, that three thousand dollars, less any kind of credit card fees, will hit your bank account in two days. So that's how um, we approach the um, time capture from Outlook to, to time capture in, in, and attachment management, email management from Outlook into legal practice management. And that's how we attack the invoicing problem. So it really cuts down on, you know, downloading a bunch of PDF invoices, attaching them to emails and sending them out. That's a really brutal workflow. Um, if you want to do it for everybody, you go to our billing dashboard, you click on fees pending invoicing right here, and then you can, you know, you can filter by all these different things. I'm not filtering by anything, but you can filter by client, you can filter by attorney, by dollar amount, by start and end type, any kind of custom field you want. And um, then you get a list of everything that's ready to go out across the firm. And what you can do is you can then just like invoice and you go through the same flow. And so everything on that previous screen, all are gonna get sent out if there's like somebody specified to receive that. So I hope that answered the question that the person asked, um, which was Natalie. Um, trying to think, that's a lot. Um, so we actually went over, it's kind of funny. Um, <clears throat> somebody asked if, if Rock Commander has uh, one on one in person tutorials. Absolutely. Um, there is free training like twice a day, every, every day of the week, well, work week at least. And usually those are very sparsely attended. So if you show up to the free training, you'll probably almost get like your own custom audience. And if you want like dedicated paid training to do like exactly what it is that you want to do. Yeah. There's, there's like paid training options as well. So I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, you know, I might as well show the CLE code uh, one more time for you. Um, but again, I'm very reachable, very approachable. 5290, one hour general, one hour technology. And um, best of luck to you. I hope to hear from you. Thank you so much.